Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Joel. That's Luis Gomes. Uh, we're here to talk about practical out of band data exfiltration in 802.11. Uh, that's Wi Fi for, uh, for anyone who may not have heard of it before. Um, I've pretty much uh, have some bio things here. Mine's a little bit more serious. Luis is a little bit better. <laughs> Uh, so I work at uh, Checkmarks, I work at Cobalt as well. Um, I co-developed AirponNG, which is a man-on-the-side attack tool uh, on, on wireless as well. Uh, I built a couple of tools. Uh, well, actually, it was more like a module or two for Metasploit 2. So I was a DEF CON 25 workshop instructor. I did a workshop about Scapy, which is also the framework we built this tool on. So things should get interesting. And uh, Luis, would you like to introduce yourself? Or just show you the money? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so for me, I'm currently head of security for uh, OLX and uh, the Nasper group. Um, I also work at Cobalt. I started in the banking industry or payments uh, industry with uh, SIBS and then moved forward to I do a couple of things in my life. But uh, ultimately, uh, currently I'm just doing bug bountings, shout out to Sopesh, and also uh, <laughs> taking care of the security in OLX. So. OK, so let's get down to business. Uh, first of all, let's do just a little bit of an intro. Uh, 802.11 has several frame, frame types. Uh, there's, uh, this is the, pretty much the, what the format is. Uh, when you have the, the type and the subtype, actually dictate what the type of frame it is. Um, if you have control frames, data frames, and uh, there's uh, management frames as well. Uh, what what uh, prior art in data exfiltration throughout of band channels in, in uh, 802.11 has done is actually g grab one of these uh, many fields and try to uh, manipulate them and insert data there where they will not be used or would not be checked or something like that. Uh, so this is pretty much what we want to do. This is your typical uh, 802.11 network. You have a, a Wi-Fi router, you have the internet on the other end, and then you have the devices you have internally. Uh, what we want to do is something like this. So you drop an implant, uh, there's a physical cable, usually it's a, it's a cable connection on the, from the implant to the, the router, uh, and then there's an attacker device that gets some kind of signal or response or whatever communications. Uh, through uh, an, a channel that's parallel to the, the actual server you're trying to use. What are the benefits of this? There's many. You don't go through their IDS or IPS or whatever. You don't send packets through their network. You can even get to a point where the wireless implant does not have an IP on the network, and, and yet you can still port scan or do whatever you want, um, and still get communications outside without anyone on the inside having any idea what's happening. So this is pretty much what we want to do. And uh, now what's the, the problems we might face or the, the, the point, the real point of this is to get communication and data across without being detected. So even though the prior art has done this semi-successfully, the very first uh, idea or the very first thought of how to implement something like this would probably be the level zero attack, which is the easy way. Just drop a rogue AP, right? So you just drop something there and connect it with a wired or wireless to the, the on scope AP, let's call it that, or the target AP. And then it, it just spins up another AP and you can just connect to that through your attacker device. And um, why, what else would you need, right? Well, there's a problem with this approach. Well. While it's out of band because it's not really on the attack uh, network, uh, the beacons, beacon frames sent by this uh, AP, which is in this case the Wi-Fi pineapple, uh, will uh, pretty much give you away because the, if somebody's doing defense on the wireless side, they will immediately detect that a new AP has popped up and is sending beacon probes and uh, sending you all these packets to your, so that it shows up in your device list when you try to connect. So pretty much this is something that uh, was the state of the art or trying to be the state of the first way to, to do it. But then you start to get into the more technical things on how to hide data inside the 
actual frames. And now I'm going to pass it on to Luis to keep going on the other parts. So, yep. So what we have right now is, uh, well, we have some stuff right now that is similar to what we are about to show. Uh, still, it's uh, not that easy for a, a blue team to detect, but if depends if the team is, one, skilled enough, two, if they have enough tools to detect it. But above all, just the, the critical point is, is anybody looking at what you are trying to send out? Number, the, I think the famous one will be Spider Labs got one called Smuggler, and there is a patents already, so or something similar about scenography. Uh, we have uh, exfiltration pa uh, patents on devices similar to what we are about to show. And there is also the one on the, on the left, on, on your left or right, uh, that is pretty much a library that assumes that creates uh, EDP channels and it's similar to ours. And we're going to show on the next slides that everything is, these, these are nice implementations, still flawed by design because if uh, you create an agnostic layer, but in what we are looking for, and you don't look for signatures or attacks that are specific using encoding or whatever you're going to think of at, at the end, you're going to understand. But right now, the, the critical part is most of them use either A, something that you can detect just by looking at a Wireshark or a CM or a, um, any other monitoring tool that you have, or B, if you have some kind of AI just looking for patterns, it's going to spike right through it, like you're gonna see all the communications and don't work because at some point, the blue team is gonna understand that something is off because either A, there is a, like you said, either a rogue AP or uh, one AP that has the same name as any other is sending too much data, encoded data on strange fields uh, or it's doing everything right but got always the same destination, always the same fields, never random, fields always static. So that is one of the ways that you see that don't work. Well, you have one of the levels that is surely, yeah, you're gonna show. Okay, so this is one of the, the means that has been, have been used before to send data out of bands. So as I was saying before, the problem with the rogue AP is that it's constantly uh, sending beacon uh, frames with the SSID name, so here I am, I am Microsoft Guest w w Wireless. So that it will keep sending those like 10 every second or something like that, so th to make sure that it shows up in your device list, Wi-Fi access point list. Uh, what some people found out, uh, namely the guys from the uh, Spider Labs, is that you can actually send just one of them, and instead of uh, sending an, a an SSID, you just send data there, like Base64 encoded, which is what they did. So they actually implemented it. I think we can probably show a demo yeah. of this. Um, okay, so let me just try to. Okay, uh, can any, everyone read the screen? Because we're going to try to do it. Nope. Okay. Uh, let's hope. Let's hope it's possible to read. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay. So this will be the the server. So you would have to set up the the receiver. So I mean, then you set the, the the interface name, and then so on one on one end you have the the server, and on the other end you have the the attacker. So what you have is, this is the implant, and that's the other device the attacker is going to use to exfiltrate data to. Um, in this case, we'll see very fast why this is a problem. So it will try to, pretty much what it will give me is a shell. Uh, let me just try to pull this up for you. OK, so pretty much what they give us is a shell. Uh, if you do ls, in theory, it would be getting the, let me just check for one second. And, uh, yeah, right. Because uh, for this to work, every uh, both cards have to be at the same channel. So since that one was channel hopping, it probably wouldn't work. 
Okay, so as you can see, it got actually a bad command, but it's fine because this is kind of, okay. So now it works, you see ls, you, they cannot access something. So this is actually just the proof of concept code. I just literally git cloned it and uh, tried to use it. So this is the experience you have. Uh, ULS, what it does is it re runs your command, grabs the output, wait for, waits for five seconds, then sends the response back. As you can yeah. see, it was just there, right? So this is the, what they had, right? So Quite there's a far. bit of a problem here. So let's try another command. Let me just exit so I can pull the, the screen up. Uh, so let's try a command that has actually a little bit more of an output instead of just three lines or four. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It's just gonna say, yeah, no, exception, so yeah. U byte format requires zero or something, just 255. Okay, so this is what happens when you try to just use a tool that's already been worked on. This is supposed to be the state of the art of open source uh, <coughs> and data exfiltration in wireless. Yeah, so why, well, this is what you, if you grab the PCAP, if you are looking at the, at the traffic right now, I don't know if some of you do uh, blue team or not, but even if you don't do blue team, like if you look at the, uh, at the uh, SSIDs on, on this part of, of, of your window. Tell me that if this is normal, like if you're just looking at normal patterns and that is what we are talking about, this over here or on in here depends on wh where you wanna look at. If you don't get spiked by this, then something is wrong. Like you need to understand that if this is your state of the art of exfiltration, then you need to step your game up because this is not going to work in any organization with proper, we're talking about, uh, in the end of the slides, we're gonna have military grade exfiltration. Like, <laughs> we're talking about when you wanna do something right, not uh, uh, get caught with it. So, um, normally what we are thinking is, and this is for people that know me, this makes sense. So, uh, <laughs> this is, you wanna get like the maximum amount of data that you can, like, Joan just showed that this, he can't like bring bring a big information outside because it's limited to to the, the size that he can exfiltrate. But the thing is, we want to get all the things that we have there. Doesn't matter if you want to just have a foothold on the organization and just Wait for uh, it. use as a shell or what, whatever you want. But the, the number one reason why these tools don't work is that they don't know how to disguise themselves. Like. You need to understand that if you want to get by any AI in the future, or if you want to get by by any detection measure, you need to be expected to be detected, but at least act act like a, a octopus. Just understand what is the texture, the feel, the looks, and be like that all the time. And do not spike any type of thresholds on patterns, because at the end of the day, uh, and we're going to show a little bit of an improvement from the state of the art that they have in, until we show you the big boy, um, is you, you can really just disguise, like you can take from, the, from that specific spike that you see in the, in the SSID, the exfiltration, and use other fields, like he showed you the fields before, just to give an idea where you can try to put your payloads to, to exfiltrate that or just to interact with the shell. But at some point, if, if somebody, like we are presenting now in the future, if we, present in more places and the tool becomes famous, people are going to start looking at the solution and um, they're gonna create rules, right? So what we're gonna present in the end, and this is just an improvement from, from the example before, is um, a way that either if they improve, doesn't matter how, how they improve it, 10 or call Watson or whatever they can call it to try to track our uh, tool, we're gonna be uh, step ahead and just blend in more and blend in more to the part where you can be exfiltrating data and not get caught. Or if you want to get caught, just in the end of the talk, we, I don't have nothing programmed to dinner and you, for some numbers we can already see some kind of detection. But uh, until then, it's uh, undetectable. Or if somebody got an idea in the end, please feel free to break our tool. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's get a little bit into the specifics. Uh, so, as I told you before, the other ones used uh, additional ELT layers on the 802.11 frames, or replacing the SSID field with the, the data you want to exfiltrate or whatever. 
Um, so let's try something different, just a different approach. Uh, let's use 802.11 data frames. They were actually designed to hold the data. So if you're doing like a get request, that's where you, the get request will actually be. Um, and they're usually encrypted because usually uh, Wi-Fi networks have encryption. So that's you're just going to be looking at random data. So that doesn't matter because for us, uh, what we really want to do is not stand out. So how do we use a data frame and not stand out that somebody's sending something outside of our network? Well, let's just take a look, a little bit of a look into what the structure is of, of this packet. So it's uh, just this is just a QoS data. So it has like the data over here. This specific packet has uh, just 155 and 45 bytes of length. Uh, it has some CCMP parameters, because that's the encryption that was used on the Wi-Fi network. Uh, uh, some addresses, just to know who is sending, who is receiving. And then there's not a lot of a lot else. Uh, so it's kind of simple. Let's see what this will look like for the attacker. So they would just drop the implant, connect it to the target, and then send the data frames up to the other device. Uh, how is this different from what we just showed you before? Well, this is what the defender sees. The, the actual implant, what it does is it scans the neighborhood, uh, neighboring APs, picks one that's at the appropriate signal strength, and then tries to emulate that, that that AP is sending a message to another station that's even further away that you can't see. So you can just, for the, the defender, it, they can just assume that they can only see half of the conversation. Because they're closer to the AP, the station is even further away, so they can only see half of it. Uh, and that's like the server talking, and when the client talks, it's the other AP. So the client will do the exact same procedure. They will look at the airspace, they will try to find a, uh, an AP to spoof, and then just start sending packets. But there's a little bit of magic here. Like, for example, how does Wi-Fi Station 2 know how to talk to Wi-Fi Station 1? Are you using hard-coded MAC addresses? No, because then you can track me. So how are you figuring this out? Well, there's some magic called TOTP, which is the technology behind your Google Authenticator codes that roll every 30 seconds. So basically what's happening is this uh, wireless implant is just sitting there quietly, iterating its TOTP algorithm every 30 seconds. And in the correct time slot, when the, the attacker's device tries to connect, uh, it will see if the MAC address, which is deterministically generated via the TOTP secret, matches with what it's expecting. It will send the, the, the it will accept the packet and send the response. Uh, with another, just it will hop channels. So this is set for a default channel of six. If it's uh, in channel six, it will be ready to receive a new connection. Uh, at the point that it receives a new connection, it will just uh, send a, a handshake packet that will say, okay, this is the, the MAC address I'm going to use because I already saw this station, this station two, which is an actual station talking to AP two, neighbor AP two. So let's just try to spoof that. And uh, now I'm, uh, the question is, and this is why Luigi was asking, how do you detect this? The question is, how do you know when you're trying to protect your company, which is uh, target AP, that AP one from the neighbor is talking to Wi-Fi station one. How do you know if that's a legit station or not? Is that in scope even? <laughs> should you should you try to even track the neighbor's AV? No. Um, I think the the asymmetry of the attack and the defense on this kind of wireless um, exfiltration with via out of band channels is um, is kind of makes it really hard for the blue team to actually track this because this is just one of the ways that you can do it. You can do it a million different ways. And if you try to make the algorithm secret, and that's the key, the secret sauce to your, to your solution, then when somebody buys it or picks it up, then you're done. If you actually have something that if you people know how it works and you still can't detect it, then you got something. And um, I think that this is a very nice solution. It will not work in every scenario because if you have a Faraday cage and a very secret underground vault, then you will not have a neighboring AP. So this will not work, right? Uh, but uh, there are many offices in high-rise buildings or just in a regular office building that has a lot of neighbors and a lot of APs in the, in the neighboring airspace. So this will probably work in 99% of the situations. 
Uh, Luis, do we want to talk a little bit more about the detection? Yeah. So most of the, so most of the times, my the, the exercise that me and Joan were having for almost a, a year now is uh, either I think I, d I develop a way to detect it, and he tries to break it, like evade it. Yeah. We do that exercise probably once per week. So um, my question is for everybody that is, this is a lot of information for a slide first. I know for a couple. <laughs> the thing is, uh, this is all the variables that I got to think about when I'm trying to detect this type of attacks. These are from two are expected. The time is the, like, is these two APs talking at the time? There is no one in the office or or is supposed to have, a, to, they are supposed to be talking at that time. Uh, this is so many information, but this is all the vectors that I gotta look, and then from all these type of questions that I can ask myself to create a detection for the type of attacks that you see right now, then we have different sources of data sources, like can be from uh, the type of infiltration that he's trying to do is coming from the implant, but uh, when you're trying to construct the rules, what you see is the, the thing over here, so logical conditions to over something that I don't know if I'm looking, I, I'm not even looking at, or trying to create a logical condition that will tell me that uh, the network events that are happening will result in an alert is very hard because everything he's doing is expected. So I, there is no type of a, of a, a difference that I can look at a, a, a healthy communication between two APs and say, well, this is something that we can detect because this has never happened before or I've I'll, I'll, never seen this before or this can happen from time to time, I don't know when, but I should review the event every single time that it happens. It doesn't happen like that. The, the last version that we have from the tool uh, only acts when there is people hacking, only uh, sends packets that are expected. If you look at RFC from, from the protocol and look at our package, uh, and on the end, feel free, it's gonna have um, a cell phone there, and you're gonna see our last version. You can you go to the to the table, and this is our military grade. This is an example of a, of a cell phone that it has right now in the hand. You can go imagine drop the implant. You go you can go there and check it. You drop the implant and you go pass by the office on the on the street. You just you can interact with the shell and, and either exfiltrate data or recon the network from the outside, like in Starbucks, just on the front of the building and interact with it. The problem is nobody's going to detect you anyway because everything that is going out is expected. So, uh, because they don't even know that these, the packages that are going out are being used to exfiltrate that at all. So my main slide about this, the point of having this slide is blue teams right now, the increase of, com of complexity is pretty hard to deal with because um, we have more and more data to look at it. Even when you use AI, AI is looking for patterns and the guy that is supposed to be the, the brain of, of the operation is looking for stu stuff that, that the AI can't really recognize. And even the guy that is looking at, uh, at uh, events that is supposed to, to, um, to be detected, he can't see anything. Uh, if you see the, uh, I, we can show you the PCAPs there. This is too much in terms of um, of information on a PCAP for you to, for for me to show you. But if you show the PCAPs and you can feel free to download the code and try to use it and detect it, uh, you can't really see on the PCAPs anything that I showed you before that is spiking. Like you go for every field, every single field, and you you can't see a difference from my from your package and and John's package. It's equal. The difference is it contains the, the data that is valuable for your company, and I don't. I'm just telling, hey, connect to me. Uh, hey, do you, want to, do you want to connect to me? So now he's going to show you our ultimate military grade and uh, Skretas or anything if you're here, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm here. I mean, uh, show, so, me the money. show me the money. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, after the talk, please feel free. I, I beg you, just go there and test for yourself the execution and uh, try a large command, stuff that you see that flawed on the others. And if you feel that is a weak implementation, use the, um, we're gonna share the code, use it and try to break it. That's, that's our model. And this will be public on a GitHub link that yeah. we will uh, share with you guys. So a pull request is always welcome <laughs> if you feel like there's something wrong with it. Just one thing I forgot, and this is a, this is a, a this is gonna be the, the name of the tool, so 
stupidly I forgot to because we are not that good in, mar in marketing if you noticed. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I mean he's not I'm trying too hard as you can see but uh, uh, but anything else just uh, talk to us on the on the end because most of the talk is pretty like you like you actually seen it uh, terminal based and we we invite you to test it because it's we we feel that everybody is like if that's for you for talk, t talking a lot and just having too much slides and information and you never actually work with it so you don't you don't know that's bullshit analysis so you need to you need to at least one time show people that actually works so yeah that is why we have this yeah okay so uh, on that note uh, i'd like to jump into the actual detection code of this this uh, exfiltration that we were using before so not actually the data ones but the beacon ones so i actually have in one of these machines I have a PCAP that should, this is great. It's still sniffing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. As you can s probably see, there's a PCAP here called level zero PCAP. And then I'm just going to show you the detect level zero dot pi, which is pretty much 13 lines of code uh, in scapy code to detect this kind of exfiltration. So this is the output of the, scri of the script. Okay, so it actually found the server responding to an LSLA or LH or whatever. And uh, then the client sent you name A, and then you found the Linux uh, version of what the implant was. So this was just as simple as that. It's 13 lines of code to detect. Uh, we built something that was similar to this, but with the assumptions that we had for our model. So our model was, if you find one way, one directional communications between an AP and a, a station, and you don't find the, the, the other way, then you will add this to our candidate uh, problematic AP uh, MAC address list. Uh, if you do find it, then you will remove the, the MAC address from the list. We, I ran that on a 1.5 million packet uh, capture file, and uh, pretty much got 50 false positives. Uh, because I did not exfiltrate anything, I just ran the tool, it should catch nothing, and then I got uh, 50 cases of exactly that scenario I was talking you, to you about. So there was an AP, there was a station that was too far away, and your detector didn't actually get to the point that it saw the connection back from that station to the neighboring AP. Um, so again, you're welcome to start trying to use the tool. I'll just demo it very simply over here. Okay, so at this point, this is running the server. Uh, it will tell you what driver you're running because if you've ever done anything with wireless, you will know that drivers suck. Uh, so you have to actually code around whatever they decided was right for their implementation. Um, so what it's doing right now, it's actually channel hopping and scanning a little bit of the airwaves and trying to see what is around it. So it will find something that it will want to spoof later uh, after it goes over the, all of the, the channels. The client will do the same. The problem is this is supposed to be dropped a long time before the client actually goes and exfiltrates data. So we have to wait a little bit for it to actually set up everything it, it needs. Uh, and after it does this, I can just connect to it. Okay, seems like it's ready. So now we try it on the, on the client. And it does pretty much the same thing and tries to find something and then it crashes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so first, first mission accomplished, demo fail. I actually know this bug. I just didn't commit the fix, which is awesome. <laughs> don't look at my code. My code sucks. Please don't look at it. Don't even look at it. Yeah, it's that bad. So please PR. You will get a link to PR. 
You can't complain if you won't PR. <laughs> OK. Yeah. OK. OK. So here we go again. Attempt number two. So if you have any questions about this, this is your time. Yeah? Why is your Python code so bad? Because I suck at coding. I mean, I'm not a coder. I'm not a developer. I just break stuff. So yeah, <laughs> that's it's, it's, it's to be expected. It's Python, what you expect. Yeah, it's to be expected. You should, I don't know why you expect me to be like a high quality coder, but OK. <laughs> In the future, Golang. Yeah, perhaps, if you write it. <laughs> I, just, I mean, the point is, I just thought this up and thought, yeah, maybe you can track it, no matter how so crappy the code is. And trust me, this is the good version of the code. <laughs> I will send you a link to make your eyes bleed if you want. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great that you have something that works, so. Yeah, it's just, it just works, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, if it works, then it works. No C over here, Fractal. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're welcome to write a C implementation because it, it would could use some speed up, speed upgrades. So, yeah, <laughs> very nice, very nice. Okay, so that's the connection established. So now we have a bit of a more flexible connection to our exfiltration server. We have no more pro problems with length. We have uh, an ACK that can actually tell the server that um, the client that the server got the request and tell the the, cli the client lets the server know that it got the response. This is all within the 802.11 uh, framework. So yeah, you will see the, the AP. Again, if you go back to the slide where you see the two neighboring APs talking to the stations, that will be the, the station. You will assume that you will see X to the APs, right? So you will see the APs talking to the stations, and then you will see X coming to the APs, but you don't know. Uh, which ones? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Talk, going to the stations, you'll see X going to the stations because that's the MAC address, the unique MAC address that will uh, that's derived from the TOTP. So that's how they know that they're talking to each other. Uh, let's try the D message command again. So now, as you can see, this won't fit in a packet, so it will just be boom, 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 sending in everything. You didn't get the X, so I'm resending, like retrying, whatever. Uh, you can still try to track it, and you still won't be able to. So if you got any ideas on how to fix this or how to track this, we're welcome to hear your thoughts. Yes, it's slow, but it works. Yeah, it's Python. So, But we do have over one kilobit of throughput, so <laughs> not that limited. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Wait, wait. Uh, wait. <laughs> Are we on questions right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, yeah? you can go. After that, you can go to over there and play with it. Hello. Yeah. Uh, nice, nice presentation. Thank you. Is this, in, this is encrypted, right? Yes, of course. You are, you're masquerading as WPA traffic? Uh, you just have to encrypt. How do you detect whether it's WPA? No, you, or you, no? have you, are you sending the WPA? Oh, yeah, sure, definitely. Instance? I mean, that's the, the, we are looking for APs which are using encryption so that we can actually send random noise and not be suspicious, right? And, and do you simulate the WPA handshake for a connecting station? No, APs? because you don't know that. You, you may not know or may not have seen the WPA handshake, but we can totally do that if you want to. But we won't be able to properly do it because if you're on the out of scope AP, then you will have to spoof it somehow because you don't know the key. Let's assume that you don't know the key of the AP you're going to spoof. So the, the handshake will never work, right? Yeah. So but either you spoof it somehow but or... But if I, I see two, two stations talking to each other... and They're not I... talking to each other. That's the point. You just see two APs that are neighboring APs that are talking to two stations, but you don't see the traffic back from those stations, right? Okay, okay, got it. And this model has been confirmed because, as I told you, I, I ran just a, a capture of, of for like six or seven hours in my house, and it's like just ground level and there's a lot of stuff on the street and offices and all that. And I did see 48 or 50 devices that were in this exact scenario. So you could see the AP talking to them, but you couldn't see the conversation back. So that's the model I was trying to replicate. 
if you packets, ran the script. And the packets are all the same size? The, the mm, how can they be? If you do ls, then it's just ls. If you do uh, blah, blah, whatever, a big command, then it will be a big packet, right? So it, at least, at, at best, it will have like the size of the block cipher, right? So that's the, yeah. the only thing that you can probably use to track it. Yeah, it matches the multiple of whatever the block size is. So perhaps that's a way. But I would like to see your false positive rate on the other kinds of, right? So, yeah. Anyone else? Talks. OK. <laughs> um, isn't it possible to detect by um, the signal, signal uh, strength? I was hoping for that question. Yes, it is. Uh, however, uh, after talking about this to the creator and uh, firmware writer for the Wi-Fi pineapple, he told me that there's actually a trick that you can do, which is to modulate the power level at which you send the packet so that the receiving end will see a fluctuating RSSI. So, now what? <laughs> right? That's My, my face yeah, when he told me that, I was that's like... That's for the outside. Wow. If you have like... Uh, if you have IPs in the corner of the area, you can see if something is inside But that that's area. assuming that it will spoof always the same IP, which it won't. Because every time you disconnect, it will scan again and say, oh, now I want to spoof the other one. So how can you actually be uh, sure that... By detecting um, neighbor uh, SSIDs that are not the ones that should be inside that perimeter? Uh, uh, how how like, do you know? For example, you have Microsoft Network and you have yeah. APs in the corners. And if something from... Oh without being Microsoft is transmitting inside the area. But how do you know that? How do you distinguish the not being Microsoft transmitting inside the area? Because if you are fluctuating the power level, then you're getting the RSSI for something but that's a RSSI lot further away. But the RSSI is inside. No, it's not because if I'm sending you at a lower power level, then the power, but it won't get the, so far. The corners get that. Ah, right, yeah, the corners, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Actually, I didn't think of that, so good one, yeah, that's a nice well, one. Well, I, did, is a I did think one. of that, the problem is, most of the times, the we, we have some scenarios where this don't work, like, one of them was being, you don't need any of this, if you wanna, if you have the implant, and imagine in a crazy scenario, a silo somewhere in the desert, and you only have one specific IP spe speaking to one, one station, then it's no noise. It's impossible for us to. Yeah, that's the Faraday cage. Scenario. Yeah, we we it's can. Just a limitation. Like, yeah. Speaking on your example, if we are tracking the the area on the specific area, I just don't have a way to to emulate anything because they are they have a concrete white list. That's why I had the logical conditions of what I am expecting to see. Uh, the sen there are some scenarios where we can create like a applicable s solutions for. But uh, like in the future, that is one of the improvements we want to have is like having this type of scenarios where we can even emulate that or, or provide yeah, some kind of... Uh, something we have to work on and yeah. emulate and test. The problem is actually creating test scenarios and actually test equipment around all that, yeah. especially the yeah. corner scenario. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how I would try to set up the detectors and try to go. Yeah. But that sounds like fun. So yeah, yeah probably sure. next year we'll have something like that. Yeah. <laughs> More questions? Yeah, there. <laughs> Thanks for the presentation. Um, I would like to, to know if, if it is possible to detect through the um, TOTP MAC addresses. Uh, so it's they are valid OUI prefix from the nmap prefix list, so I will select randomly or just deterministically through the TOTP secret. I will use that to pick one of the vendors and then use that to pick one the rest of the termination of the map. And uh, um, if you if you guys have the the attack installed on that network uh, through through the time. Um, a lot of MAC addresses will be detected. No, because, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that part. Uh, if you look here, you will see a message saying stopping TOTP. Why? Because a connection has been initiated, and now it will stay at the, the MAC addresses it was picked. Because I did notice that, and that's one of the things I fixed, because it couldn't be keeping changing the IPs. The MAC addresses every 30 seconds, that would be a red flag, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, when it gets a connection, it stops there. 
And then when I leave or time out, which just happened, yeah. then it will start again the process of scanning what's what's around Choosing. it and yep. blah, blah, blah. So you are witnessing it right now. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's okay. why we keep the, the yeah. program running. More questions? Okay. No? Uh, okay. Go to the mm -hmm. to the station and just try it out on the mobile device because yeah. that is the practical implementation there. Yeah. yeah.